pillows. So my other video, it stopped on me. I'm glad they give me a warning, but they only give me like a few seconds warning. Um, letting me know that my storage space ran out. <clears throat> that it's time to, um, you know, that it's time to, um, you know, end the video. So my video cut off the second part. So now I have to do a part three. So I'm undecided on what to do. Oh man, as I said, um, trying to fight to not um, give in to a gym membership, knowing it's a trap, the same way that cell phones used to be a trap and a contract um, years ago. I'm glad that I don't have a contract on the phone. Mine's month to month. <clears throat> and even the so-called month to month gyms or gyms where you want to pay cash for the whole year, they still feel like as if they have to have your debit card on file or credit card. And I'm like, why? It's just freaking exercise. I don't know why they feel like they're entitled to every right to own your debit card and all your finances. You know, so, um, <clears throat> yeah, I guess gyms are a scam. But it's getting, it was not cold yet, but it's getting to be that time <clears throat> to be too cold to go to the beach. <clears throat> and my clothes won't dry as fast. Um, and, and that's not good. So I am frustrated and wanting to pull my hair out because I'm scared to sign apartment leases again because of the trauma and abuse from the neighborhood noise, not just noise, but them threatening my life for even, I mean, y'all, if y'all would. I mean, uh, back in April, no, it was beginning of May earlier this year when that guy threatened me and cussed me out, and I wasn't, I didn't, wasn't even locked in a lease. That was, you know, I was staying with that roommate, and he made a threat to get his friends, you know, to jump me or whatever, and so. You know, if you live in gangster ghetto gang stalkers are always the ones who try to fight, act like they want to fight you or whatever. And um, when I was living in Jefferson, Louisiana, Shrewsbury, um, part of New Orleans, one of the gang stalking perp neighbors, for bla he was blasting his loud music and told me that one day somebody's gonna bust me upside the fucking head. He said, see her? Huh? One day somebody's gonna bust her upside the fucking head. That's exactly how he said it, too. Um, it's like a man being that cruel and abusive towards a female that you think I deserve for somebody to bust me upside the head because you're a cruel, abusive, sociopathic, gang-stalking perp who waits till I'm sleep deprived and have the worst headache to blast music loud enough to pound through every cell in my body. And so um, they would cleverly wait till it's daytime and do it all day, every day. And they have a, a house and a car and they don't go to work. They don't have a job. And even the neighbors across the street pointed out well, all they do is sit around and blast music all day, and he even wonder how did, how they even where do they get money at to get a car? And they weren't having cars; they was freaking SUVs, you, you know. And even though they were used SUVs, but they were SUVs, and how they can have a a car and a house and supposedly disabled on fixed income. Okay, I'm disabled on fixed income too. 
But look at my situation. How the hell could they afford a car? I can't afford a car. And even if I had housing, I would be den you know, I couldn't find a car under five hundred dollars. It would have to be five hundred dollars a month, but not five hundred dollars. Gone are the days where you can get a good running car, used car for five hundred dollars. It just doesn't exist anymore. Five hundred dollars is a car for parts. The cheapest I've seen for a good running car would be like three thousand. And and that would have to be something like like a 1996 Hyundai, I mean Hyundai Elantra or a Honda Accord or something, you know. So I'm scared to, um, you, you know. Also, the electronic weapons. I mean, they they vibrated me last night, but I was outside. I was shocked that they were doing that when I was outside because. For at least a minimum of a whole year, they did not vibrate my body What me being outside on the streets. And now they do that. You know, I thought it was just an, when I was inside. And they had all kinds of attacks on my body. Um, while, when I had a place with them uh, causing heart palpitations, sciatica symptoms, um, me feeling my body overheat and um feeling pressure on my head feeling like i think i'm having a heart attack of course the sleep deprivation whether i'm on the streets or or um have a place to stay and stuff like that but at the same time i feel dirty but and being in hotels and motels i feel that like dirty and uncomfortable you know because they don't clean them properly and um, you never know if you're going to have bloody uh, bed sheets to sleep on, that to be forced to, you, you, you know, that even if they removed the sheets, they still made me sleep in that same bed. And I just felt so tortured and uncomfortable with that, you know, or, or, or something just crummy and dirty. Or you never know if a druggie, a dirty homeless druggie just you know, moved out of that motel or hotel room and then you have to sleep in there and touch everything they touched. Or, or you, you never know if a whole bunch of roaches is going to get all on your stuff, you know. So I be feeling icky when, in hotels and motels. I mean, I, I, I wish that, I mean, some people have said, you know, suggested the, um, try to raise money for a van to be donated or if somebody can just flat out donate me a van to live in and I can work in it too I mean I can make deliveries in that van and that can help me eat better and sleep better um if I eat healthier um Sometimes, if I eat a, a, a combination of large amounts of fruits and vegetables within a day, it depends on which fruits and vegetables they are. It can help me sleep really good. But, I mean, if I eat just like cabbage and carrots and onions and, and then have berries, that combination won't help me sleep. But I have to have like... Um, mangoes and um, let's see, mango and let me think. Say for example, like mango, kiwi, and banana, and then later on that day have um some arugula and spinach or spring mix and, and arugula. Well, I, sometimes arugula is mixed in with spring mix or spinach with um, some, let's see, I, now I, I can't think of what other fruits and what other vegetables are supposed to help you sleep really good. Something other than greens that help you sleep pretty good. Oh yeah, a green, I mean like uh, red for some reason, only the red peppers help me sleep good. Not the green peppers or yellow peppers, but the red peppers help me sleep good. Um, almonds, when they're soaked, raw almonds that are soaked for at least 12 hours 
and I eat 28 of them or 30 of them, that helped me sleep good. But the last couple of times I tried that, the gang stalking perps, they some way stopped that. Like Benadryl stopped being effective anymore. And um, so I can't, um, I mean, I, my mind went blank because I had it on my mind about what, what fruits and vegetables helped me sleep good. And certain nuts, certain cereal, like frosted mini wheats helped me sleep good. Used to, not no more. So, um, yeah, I was, some, some people suggested that I get a van or RV donated to me and I can live and work in that. Live and work, you know, and and I can be adventurous, you know. But um, people really think I should just go to a shelter, and I'm like, y'all don't understand. First of all, shelters without the five hundred dollar deposit, or 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 have a seven hundred dollar deposit or a thousand dollar deposit. You might, I mean. Monthly, an apartment is cheaper than the shelter nowadays. You know, that's just a cheap apartment, not necessarily low income. But a cheap apartment is cheaper than the shelters nowadays. Now they want $600 to stay in a shelter. And you can't choose what you want to eat. And it, and um, it's like you're paying to live, like you voluntarily sign yourself away. It's like you're paying to live in a voluntary prison with no rights, everything stripped from you, you know, and then they overcharge you, scam you, <clears throat> take nearly all your money and won't allow you to eat when you want. You can't use your cell phone like you want to. You have to um, give, a, like you have to um, put all your belongings in this spot. You can't have it for yourself. And everything, all these rules and control and abuse and the shelters and exploitation is all for your safety. Bullshit, you know. We're all grown adults. So they treat us like worse than kids. So, um, I, I, I mean, I um, still don't know what to do. I don't know if I should just stay on the streets the whole month, except for one night since that guy gave me $100, I figured maybe if I can just stay in the shelter, I mean, the uh, hotel room for one night and then stay on the streets for the rest of the month, but just get a gym membership, either that or say no and just try to get a week in a, um, the cheaper, I'm not going to say which one, hotel, um, for one week, that's under four hundred dollars for a week. But um, it's it's like it'll be like two hundred seventy five dollars for a week, but then they want a one hundred dollar deposit. But overall, for a whole month, it would be like. $1,050 and it's a decent very clean it's self serve but it's they keep it really clean and no bed bugs none of that you know but it's still gang stalking and perping you know but it's very clean and um so I don't know I'm thinking about if I can get that for a week and then work on my books and be able to concentrate and focus I can hopefully make money that way. I thought figure it would be like a book writing version of busking or like writing short stories online and accepting donations for that. Um, but it seems like it's very hard to get yourself out there. You know, here in Pensacola, I, I witnessed if you're white and you look clean, and kind of rich, and you're busking on the streets or playing music, they put a whole bunch of money in your guitar case. Like, you get a lot of money if you're white. But if you're black, well, black or white, and you're poor and don't have much, if you look, if you look 
dirtier and homeless, then you don't get much of nothing. But the already rich, you know, but I see black people out there that's poor and homeless, not necessarily that dirty, but I see them be black and they play music outside on Palafox Street downtown for eight hours and all they get is two or three dollars throughout the whole eight hours and they still just keep going every day. But white druggies, you know, they go on the highway or whatever. I mean, not on the highway, but like by the exit on certain highways or, or certain main streets. And they brag about how they got $250 from, from people. And then they brag about how they went to, they brag about how they went to use it for drugs and stuff. But, but you know, it's like other people, they don't really go use their money for drugs, but, you know, all they get is a couple of dollars. But the people who brag about using their money for drugs, those are the ones who get the most money or the ones who brag about admitting that they scam people and drive around in a BMW, pretend fake homeless, they get all, this, all the money and support and everything. You know, so many people say that they wonder and worry for me about me being on, my own family don't even care, but strangers say that they worry for me being on the streets all night, every night by myself. You know, most people try to block that and feel like they don't feel an ounce of empathy for me since I get an income, but the way the system has it set up make it very difficult. And the gang stalking perps, they block me from getting housing. I was this close earlier this year to getting housing. So I tried what I could and they didn't let me know the real deal or the full deal with everything. And they just want to keep me in this position. And fuck you and shame on you professed targeted individuals who think I should either go in a shelter or stay in my predicament rather than better bettering myself. Or if you falsely accuse me of being a freeloader or a leecher. Because y'all know damn well I tried what I could for job applications. All they do is either play with me or ignore me and waste my time. Or, you know, I try to get my books out, they sabotage that. Try to get my real stories out, they sabotage that. They keep me sleep deprived, you know how. And if, and if I do get a job, they workplace mob. So I'm not just an idle beggar. You know, I'm trying to better myself and they're just blocking everything, you know. And I'm trying what I could. I have a bachelor's degree. I have a whole college degree. And y'all know me well enough to know Y'all know I'm not on any drugs. So, um, yeah, I'm still undecided of what I want to do. But those are some of the ideas. But... You know, I wish I did have help was if somebody could donate me a vehicle um, or, you know, even enough money for a vehicle. I mean, they have somebody who, but it's way in Milton, Florida. I can't get out there. And she's open to letting me um, rent the place, but she said it, it's not ready yet. It needs to be fixed up, and the man can't fix the place up because he's sick or whatever. And, and um, y you know, people act like as if their suggestion is the best advice and they wonder why am I still asking for help and it's like they want to block me from seeking help. I mean, they feel like I should only take their advice and only their advice and, and like as if I shouldn't have any business asking for help, you know. So this was part three of me just figuring out what to do. Um, me figuring out what to do for the month of September because I feel like I don't want to still be on the streets past October and it's getting colder. So thanks for watching. And by the way, before I go, um, I wanted to say that I reached out to, I finally got to talk to the guy from Invisible People, but he said his mom recently passed away and he might end up back homeless himself. I'm hoping he wouldn't, but I thought they were ignoring me because I posted on YouTube on one of his chats about um, 
I mean, he was live on YouTube a few months ago, and it's like my comments kept being censored when I was trying to talk about homelessness and targeted individuals, you know, so I thought he was ignoring me on purpose, but I'm glad he finally responded. And that um, Squad the Planet website, they blocked me and falsely accused me of spam when I was trying to put my information out there about targeted individuals and homelessness. So, I mean, but this guy, I'm wondering if a lot of us either homeless or on the verge of homeless targeted individuals get our homeless targeted stories out there to him maybe we could need to take a break for now for now and let him grieve and maybe after a couple of months um maybe we can get to him and and you know get our story out there about since homelessness is a big component of being targeted so um I don't know if anybody would like to band together with me and help me out with trying to get our homeless. I mean, because a lot of people, homeless people have a lot of traumatic backgrounds and they be might be targeted individuals and don't even realize it. So I need to try to get that story out there, you know. Invisiblepeople.tv is the website. And Invisible People, they have webs. I mean, they have their website. They have YouTube. They have... Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. So if you go to, if you have a Twitter, go to Invisible People or like at Invisible People or the at Hardly Normal. And um, so I'm done rambling for now and I'm pretty sure I'm probably going to do another topic later on. So I'll see y'all later. Bye.